What's up everybody, Phil here. I want to thank you for joining me in part three of our tutorial series on building a neural network from scratch. When we left off, we had just finished loading the MNIST training data and visualizing some of that training data. Recall that we had 60,000 examples of training data and 10,000 examples of test data. We also have the associated labels so that way we can perform supervised learning. So today we're going to get on with the business of creating our neural network and we're going to get through pretty much the bulk of this project. So we still have quite a bit of ground to cover just to show you what is involved. We have to do the activation function of the neuron. We have to perform the gradient of the activation function. And the reason for that is that we're going to have to perform uh, derivatives of our landscape with respect to the weights which are going to depend on that activation function. We're going to have to add bias units and I hadn't covered this in too much detail in our introductory video but I'll discuss that more when we get there. We'll have to do a feed forward of our model and as well as encoding the labels. So what this means is we're going to take our training labels from an integer into a vector representation. Uh, we're going to have to perform model learning. In other words, the model has to actually navigate that parameter space. We're going to have to calculate the cost function. Uh, I'll get to that when we get there. And did I mention we're going to need gradients with respect respect to the weights of our model and I think that'll be pretty much it. Oh, we'll have to also initialize those weights. So a fair amount of ground to cover. I want to start with the easy stuff first. So let's talk about encoding the training labels. So when we load it in the data, the training labels come as just integers. So we have handwritten digits from 0 to 9, and the training labels are just uh, numerical representations from 0 to 9. For our neural network, we want to perform multi-class classification. We want to take that input and dump it into one of 10 different classes, right? And so to do that, we'll need a column vector representation. So just going back to the example from our first video, when you're trying to compare dogs versus cats, you could represent dogs as a two element column vector with a one in the first element and a zero in the second, and likewise for cats, a zero and one. So these are both mutually exclusive, they're distinct, and this encodes all of the information you need to know about the classification of an image, right? It's either a dog or it's a cat. Now you could introduce a third class, like unknown, maybe it's a raccoon and it looks a little bit like a cat, a little bit like a dog, you, the model isn't really sure. But in reality, what we're going to get are probabilities for it being one class or the other. So that's going to be fine. Um, so we're going to start with encoding that. And we'll go ahead and comment, comment out this line because we don't need to, to uh, load our training data to do this. That'll just take up extra CPU cycles. So we want to define a new function called encode1hot. And that is going to take some vector y. and we're going to go ahead and hard code the number of labels. So for the purpose of this neural network, we know that we're going to be dealing with uh, classifying handwritten digits. So we know there's only going to be 10 labels. You could pass, if you want to make this a more robust uh, function, you could pass in the number of labels as a variable. But for our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and hard code that. So we'll make a temporary variable called one hot, and we want to initialize that to a, a numpy array filled with zeros and we're going to want to um, pass it in the number of labels so that way we get a uh, the labels being along the columns and sorry along the yeah along the column and then we want the number of training examples to be our number of columns. So you're going to have a one hot vector, which is a 10 unit vector but filled with either ones or zeros, and then the columns are going to be each training example. So we're going to do, we're going to loop over this and enumerate y, whatever it is we're passing in, some integers. We're going to want to encode the x and y as 1.0 and we're going to want to return that one hot function. And so to demonstrate how this works, 
let's just do something basic like y equals a numpy array, uh, something like a four, a five, a nine, and a zero. Okay, and then z is going to be the one hot representation of y, and then we're just going to print out z and see what we get. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so you know I might make it even easier to see print y so you can see the original. So our original is we have four training examples, right? Four, a five, a nine, and a zero. And the output is a 10 unit column vector times four training examples. So the first training example is a four. So you have a one in this fourth position, right? So it's zero, one, two, three, and four. And five is just zero, one, two, three, four, and five, right? And so on for the ninth, right? Remember it's zero through nine, so a one in the last position. And then zero is the first position. Pretty straightforward, right? Nothing magical there. So let's come back here and move along with the next simplest function, which is going to be our activation function. So in neural networks, you have many different activation functions. And if you don't recall what that means, an activation function is just some mathematical output of our neuron, right? So the neuron takes in a whole bunch of different inputs from all of its uh, input variables, and then it has to put them through some sort of mathematical function to determine the probability of it being whatever it is that neuron represents. There are many different um, activation functions. We're going to go ahead and use something called the sigmoid function. Uh, if you're not familiar, I'm just going to go ahead and define it. You can Google sigmoid function if you want, but we're going to start out with def sigmoid of z, and the sigmoid function is just 1 divided by 1 plus the exponential of minus z. Now we're going to have to modify this definition in a minute because this um, this uh, exponential can blow up so we're going to have to um, modify this shortly. So um, the other way I'll go ahead and show you but comment it out. The shorthand for this is a function called exit of z and we'll actually use that when we run our neural network but the exit function is just the correct implementation of this function and you find that in the scipy library so from scipy.special we want to import exit and to give you an idea of how this function looks let's do something to visualize it So we'll say x equals mp dot a range. Let's just make a uh, array of, of numpy values from minus 10 to 10 in steps of 0 0.1. Declare y to be the sigmoid of az of z of x. Sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and plot. And we're just going to plot x and y and plot.show. So we'll just go ahead and call the visualize sigmoid function. And we get a plot like this. So here along the x axis is our minus 10 to 10 values, and the y is our sigmoid of x. So you see that sigmoid varies between 0 and 1. And in particular, for really large negative values, it tends toward 0. And for really large positive values, it tends toward 1. Right? You can kind of see that by looking at the function here. You replace really large negative values. You get 1 over 1 plus e to the minus negative of a large number is a large number. So 1 over a large number is is uh, zero and then for large positive numbers this exponential term goes to zero and so it tends it limits to one over one so this function has a limiting value of going between zero and one 
and you can have prob you can have fractional values for relatively small values of input. So it has the desired behavior that we want. And so this is, will serve as the basis of our activation function. And just to prove that these two functions are identical, because you should be skeptical, we'll go ahead and run it again. And you can see that indeed it gives you this exact same behavior. It tends to zero for uh, large negative values and tends to one for large positive values. And so uh, we won't use the visualize sigmoid function again. I just want to toss it in there to show you what it looks like. And now that we have a few tools for doing the kind of uh, utilitarian type stuff around our neural network, we can actually get to the business of constructing that neural network. So one logical place to start would be uh, initializing the weights, and then we can move on to adding bias units and calculating the cost. And I'll get to that in the next video. I'll chop it here. Uh, make sure to tune in. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you like the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.